Emily Landau, um, in terms of the deal itself, I'm sure you scoured and you looked it over. And what are the problems with the, I mean, did we really expect that the Iranians were going to give up the right to enrich uranium or that that was going to be offered? Well, first of all, they do not have the right to enrich uranium. It's that, that it was though. Well, no. They, they, the Iranians wanted a clear sentence in the preamble saying that that was not given to them. Uh, the, both of the sides of the negotiators found some kind of way of getting around, around the, that. Yeah. So they're continuing enrichment. They do not have the right to continue enrichment. But I want to say about this deal, listen, I mean, we can't judge the deal in terms that uh, are not really connected to what the goal of this deal was. In other words, uh, to criticize this deal that it's not dismantling Iran's nuclear program is in a way not fair because it wasn't meant to do that. Now you can criticize the logic of an interim deal, which right. is something that I do. I think an interim deal is problematic because it creates a certain uh, situation that then needs to lead to that comprehensive deal, whereas what we're probably going to see, first of all, it can become a status quo. And secondly, what we're going to see probably over the next six months is continued haggling over every sentence in that deal. The Iranians are not just going to sit quietly and say, okay, we got these, this minimum sanctions relief. We have all these obligations. Now let's sit down and discuss the comprehensive deal. They're going to be pressing the international community for additional sanctions relief. They're going to be arguing over every obligation they have in the nuclear realm. There's a lot of room here for different interpretations. We already saw the White House released what they think the deal is, and the Iranians released what they think the deal is, and these are not identical documents. That's a problem. The minute there's room for different interpretations, you can be sure that the Iranians are going to jump in and start questioning and challenging everything about that agreement. And that's the problem. So the problem isn't the exact, you know, clauses in the deal, which right. I think are, you know, uh, plus minus something that can be lived with. The problem is with the logic of this kind of deal and the Obama administration thinking that this is going to be a neat and orderly process. Everybody's going to now, you know, we have the situation frozen and now we'll sit down to negotiate. It's just not going to work that way. Uh, speaking about past experience, and in that respect, Minister Landau, you know, we all are, I think, in the Middle East, and especially in Israel, always very paranoid about the Iranians. Their past experience have showed that, you know, they, they have a tendency to not live up to full agreements. But at the end of the day, it is a new regime there. And shouldn't it be given, shouldn't be given a chance just for the sake of diplomacy, as the Americans say, to try and progress something without military options on the table all the time, or without moving towards strikes? We shouldn't forget that a few days ago, this new regime that you mentioned, had uh, a whole large uh, conference in which uh, not Rouhani, but their uh, leader Khamenei spoke once again about the need to destroy Israel. He spoke about us as, as, as mad dogs. Moreover, the mob in there chanted also death to America. That's the new Iran that we are speaking of and we should not forget that similar agreements were cut in the past between the West and North Korea. What happened to North Korea? When we look on countries like North Korea, as well as Iran, that has negotiated for 10 years on uh, this nuclear business, they're using this time of negotiations just to continue and develop their capabilities. We should not forget that. In fact, when I'm just reiterating in my words what uh, Emily just said, Rouhani, a couple of days ago, simply said that the sanctions regime is now going to be dismantled, as well as Iran has been given uh, the legitimacy or the right to enrich uranium. That's yeah, what he said. said it, it's all about interpretations. At the end yeah. of the day, it has affected Israeli-American relations. And when we have the foreign minister, um, uh, Avigdor Lieberman, about a week ago saying that Israel has the right to pursue different allies, I mean, hasn't this just cost Israel one of its, I mean, if not the most important relationship it has Excuse in the international He didn't arena. say that. He didn't say that. He has never said on the contrary. Yesterday, a couple of days ago, he reiterated the fact that America is the most important and strongest Israeli ally. But he also said that uh, Israel should look, in order to alleviate us coming to the United States each time for an additional issue, as the United States has its own problems these days, 
we should also look to additional countries that might but have But in political interest. climates, you know, this, you know, this can be you know, misinterpreted in other ways. And that's why I'm trying not to misinterpret <laughs> that. <laughs> no, no, valid point in that respect. But, we, okay, when it comes to, you know, the United States, Emily Landau, as you said, hoping that this will be a Western negotiation, they seem to be very happy with the agreement. I mean, are they missing the point? Is this something that you think is going to go exactly the same way as it did in the past? Look, I think one of the problems in the way this whole issue is being framed is the fact that all of the resistance to the agreement and to what we might see over the next six months is being associated with Israel. And I, you know, there are technical issues here. There's past experience of negotiating with Iran. And what Israel's seeing should be seen by others as well. Um, and this is something that's a little bit problematic. And, and, and we saw it over the past weeks of the negotiations where the international community seemed a little bit too eager yeah. to get to this deal. Um, as far as the United States is concerned, it seems that it's because they would like a changed bilateral relationship with regard to the Europeans. Obviously, they want to get back to business with one, Iran. To go back so, in. I mean, it, it, the issues on the table, the concerns, should be shared by everyone. Israel isn't saying anything that's, you know, outrageous or not uh, uh, clear from the details of the of these negotiations. However, I think Netanyahu makes a mistake by speaking, you know, too loudly, too openly, and making this something that, in the public eye, seems very mm -hmm. much connected I, only I, to in Israel. That respect, and really quickly.